As the sun began to dip below the horizon, Orin ventured into the Blackthorn Woods, where the twisted trees stood like sentinels guarding an ancient secret. He had heard rumours of the forest his entire life, whispered tales of a blood cult that had vanished years ago. Yet something had always drawn him here, a feeling he could not shake. The air was thick, and every step he took stirred the fallen leaves, a symphony of crackles that seemed to echo through the trees. Orin's heart raced as he walked deeper, his path swallowed by shadows. He recalled the stories his father used to tell, the warnings of a curse that clung to the woods like a shroud. No one knew how or why the cult had disappeared, only that those who ventured into the forest often did not return. But Orin felt a strange compulsion, as if an unseen force beckoned him towards something he could not yet understand. Soon, he reached a small clearing, where the remains of an altar stood half buried beneath a bed of vines and moss. Stones lay scattered, each one marked with faint crude symbols that glowed faintly under the dim light. Kneeling beside the altar, Orin could see the faint stains of dried blood on the stones, evidence of the rituals that had once been performed here. He reached out, his fingers brushing against the cold surface, and felt an inexplicable surge of energy course through him. A whisper seemed to rise from the ground, echoing in his mind, filling him with an unsettling sense of familiarity. The symbols on the stones seemed to pulse as he touched them, like a heartbeat buried within the rock. Orin knew then that he was no stranger to this place. He felt as though he had been here before, in another life, or perhaps in a dream. Yet, something within him stirred, a memory he could not place, a truth that lingered just beyond his grasp. As darkness enveloped the woods, Orin rose, feeling the weight of the silence pressing down on him. The forest had gone still, as if holding its breath, and he knew that he was not alone. Shadows shifted among the trees, and a chill ran down his spine. He could feel the forest watching him, waiting. With a final glance at the altar, he turned back toward the path, but he knew that he would return. The blood of the cult was in his veins, binding him to the legacy he had yet to discover. As Orin delved deeper into the Blackthorn Woods, he became acutely aware of the forest's unnatural silence. Every step felt heavier, as though the earth itself sought to drag him down. Shadows seemed to move of their own accord, and the air grew thick with an acrid scent that clung to his senses. Suddenly, a flicker of movement caught his eye, a figure darting between the trees, cloaked and swift. Orin tensed, gripping the small dagger he kept at his side, but the figure was gone as quickly as it appeared. Determined to unravel the forest's mysteries, Orin pressed on, reaching an ancient grove where the trees twisted together overhead, blocking out the last remnants of daylight. At the grove's centre stood Astrid, a woman whose pale skin and dark eyes betrayed a familiarity with the wood's secrets. She seemed to be waiting, her gaze piercing through the dimness, as though she had known Orin would come. Without a word, she motioned for him to follow, leading him to a clearing where strange symbols were etched into the soil. This place, Astrid murmured, her voice barely more than a whisper, is where the blood cult performed their most sacred rites. Every soul taken here was given freely, or so they believed. Their blood nourished the forest, binding it to their will. As she spoke, Orin felt a strange pull within him, as if the very ground beneath him recognised his presence. Astrid's words stirred memories he had never known, fragments of rituals and chants that echoed within his mind, stirring an unease he could not shake. Astrid led him further into the clearing, where they encountered Corvus, a man with eyes as sharp and dark as a raven's wing. Corvus regarded Orin with a calculating gaze, as though weighing his worth. You carry their blood, he stated, his voice flat and unyielding. The blood of the cult flows within you. It binds you to their legacy, whether you wish it or not. Orin clenched his fists, a surge of anger rising within him, but he knew there was truth in Corvus's words. Somehow he felt it in his bones, an ancient calling that he could not deny. As the night deepened, 
Orin found himself drawn to the forest's heart, where the trees grew closer, their branches interlocking like a cage. He could hear whispers now, voices that seemed to emanate from the very soil beneath his feet calling his name. The weight of his inheritance bore down upon him, and he knew there was no turning back. With Astrid and Corvus at his side, Orin took his first steps toward claiming the legacy he had unwittingly inherited, a legacy bound in blood and shadow. As Orin, Astrid and Corvus ventured deeper into the Blackthorn Woods, they reached a clearing where the trees parted, revealing a massive stone monolith rising from the ground. The air around it was heavy with an ancient power, and Orin felt his pulse quicken. Strange symbols covered the monolith, glowing faintly as if responding to his presence. He knew, with an inexplicable certainty, that this was the heart of the cult's power, the place where he would confront his fate. Astrid stepped back, her face a mask of resignation, while Corvus regarded Orin with a solemn gaze. The cult marked you as their heir, Corvus intoned, his voice low and reverent. It is your blood that will seal the pact and awaken the forest's true power. Orin shook his head, the weight of the revelation crashing down upon him. He had not chosen this path, yet he could feel the forest pulling him closer, binding him to a legacy that had been written in blood long before his birth. As Orin approached the monolith, the symbols blazed to life, illuminating the clearing with a crimson glow. A deep guttural chant rose from the forest, voices from beyond the veil that echoed with the memories of countless sacrifices. He felt a searing pain in his chest as the cult's mark burned itself into his skin, linking him irrevocably to the ancient rites. He dropped to his knees, the weight of the forest's power bearing down upon him, and in that moment, he understood. He was no mere heir, he was the key to the cult's survival, the vessel through which their dark power would be reborn. A sudden surge of energy coursed through him, and Orin rose, his eyes glowing with the same crimson light that pulsed from the monolith. He felt the forest's life force merging with his own, its roots intertwining with his soul. Astrid and Corvus knelt before him, their faces a mixture of awe and terror. They too had been bound to the cult's fate, but only Orin bore the true mark of leadership. As he raised his hands, he felt the forest respond, the trees bending and shifting, acknowledging his new power. But even as he embraced his destiny, Orin felt a lingering dread. He could sense the forest's hunger, an insatiable thirst for blood that he would be forced to feed. The legacy was his, yet he could feel it devouring him, consuming his very essence. He knew that this was only the beginning. The cult's true power was yet to be revealed, and he would be the one to awaken it. With a final shuddering breath, he accepted his role as the blood cult's heir, sealing his fate and binding himself to the Blackthorn Woods for eternity. Orin felt the forest settle around him, an eerie calm washing over the Blackthorn Woods, as if the trees themselves had been waiting for this moment. The power he now wielded pulsed through his veins, a dark gift that felt both exhilarating and terrifying. He could feel every root and branch, every heartbeat of the ancient forest, as if they were extensions of his own body. Yet, with each pulse, he sensed the hunger lurking beneath the surface, a thirst for blood that could never be sated. Astrid and Corvus rose to their feet, their faces marked with a reverence Orin had never seen before. They looked at him not as a friend or a fellow wanderer, but as their leader, the one they had been waiting for. The forest has chosen you, Astrid murmured, her voice trembling with awe. Corvus merely nodded, his gaze unwavering. Orin felt the weight of their expectations pressing down on him, the realization that he now bore the burden of a legacy steeped in darkness. As they began to leave the clearing, Orin noticed the way the forest seemed to bend toward him, branches reaching out as if to touch him. The air was thick with whispers, voices from beyond the grave calling out to him with a fervour that sent chills down his spine. He could sense the souls of the cult's victims, bound to the forest, each one a sacrifice that had strengthened the wood's hold on this world. He knew that he was now their keeper, the guardian of this haunted realm. But as they ventured back toward the forest's edge, 
a new fear gnawed at Orin's heart. He realized that his bond with the forest would demand a steep price, a price he had not yet fully understood. The forest's hunger was his hunger, its thirst for blood now a part of him. He knew that the cult's rituals would continue, that he would be the one to ensure their rites were performed, feeding the forest's insatiable appetite. The legacy was his, but it was also his curse, a chain that bound him to the woods for as long as he lived. As they reached the boundary of the forest, Orin glanced back at the Blackthorn Woods, a dark sense of foreboding settling over him. He knew that he could never truly leave, that the forest would always call him back, its twisted branches a reminder of the bloodline that bound him to this place. With Astrid and Corvus at his side, he took a deep breath, resigning himself to the fate he had inherited. The cult's legacy was now his own, and he would carry it for better or worse, until the end of his days. Orin stood at the edge of the Blackthorn Woods, the ancient trees looming behind him like silent sentinels. He could feel the forest's presence within him, its dark power entwined with his very soul. He had become the blood cult's heir, bound to the forest and its insatiable hunger. The weight of his inheritance pressed upon him, and he knew that there would be no escaping it. This was his fate, to carry the legacy of the cult and protect the woods that had claimed him. As Orin began to leave, the forest resisted, its twisted branches seeming to claw at him, pulling him back. He knew that he could never truly leave, that the forest would always be with him, no matter where he went. With each step, he felt its call, a whispering voice in the back of his mind reminding him of the sacrifices that had fed its roots and the blood that now ran through his veins. He glanced at Astrid and Corvus, their faces resigned, yet resolute. They too were bound to him, a dark family united by fate. The villagers in the nearby hamlet spoke in hushed tones when they saw Orin, recognising something different in his gaze, a shadow that seemed to linger, a darkness that had not been there before. They would tell stories of him, the man who had ventured into the Blackthorn Woods and returned, changed. They would speak of the way the forest seemed to watch over him, its branches bending toward him in reverence. But none would dare to approach, for they knew that Orin was no longer just a man. He was a part of the woods, a guardian of its secrets. Orin soon returned to the heart of the forest, accepting his role as the custodian of its dark legacy. He could feel the spirits of the cult's victims, bound to him as much as they were bound to the soil beneath his feet. They would guide him, whispering ancient rites and forbidden knowledge, teaching him the ways of the forest and the rituals that would sustain it. He would protect the woods, but he would also feed it, ensuring that its hunger was never left wanting. As he stood once more before the monolith, Orin felt a deep sense of peace. He was no longer afraid, for he had embraced his fate. He would walk the path of the blood cult, his life entwined with the Blackthorn Woods until the end of his days. He had become the legacy, the living embodiment of the forest's dark power. And as he raised his hands, feeling the pulse of the forest in his veins, he knew that he would carry this legacy forward, binding others to it as he had been bound, forever entwined with the blood of the woods.